Hey, United fans! Fasten your seatbelts because a change is on the horizon. With the Glazers set to sell, we're going to take a look at the contenders vying to own one of the largest clubs in world football. But first, let's recap the current situation at United. Since the Glazers took over in 2005, the club's fortunes have dipped, with a decade of poor management from the boardroom to the pitch. Now the club is up for grabs at a whopping £6 billion, and the fans want to know who's stepping up. First up, could United get Qatari owners? It's no secret that clubs taken over by sheiks have seen major success. Just look at Manchester City. With Sheik Jassim and his Qatar group in the running, fans might be willing to overlook any moral concerns for the chance at reclaiming former glory. The Qatar group has already had a few bids rejected, but is likely to return with another. As the son of the former Prime Minister of Qatar, Sheikh Jassim has deep pockets, an estimated £6 billion to be exact, and a personal connection to United. Fans will want to know if the group sees United as a business, a plaything, or a club with a rich tradition. Should Sheikh Jassim be successful in purchasing the club? then he would join Paris Saint-Germain's Tamim bin Hamad al Thani in becoming the second Qatari owner of a high-profile European football club. It is understood that along with clearing the Glazers' dirty debt and redeveloping Old Trafford and Carrington, Qatar's sports investments are already planning for success should the Manchester United takeover prove to be successful. With plans in place to mold Manchester United, Paris Saint-Germain, and Sporting Braga into European football's most powerful multi-club network. As reported by the Daily Record, QSI executives intend to use Portuguese club Braga, also owned by the QSI, as a development club for both PSG and United. The intention would be to send European and South American talent on loan to the Liga NOS outfit in order to gain valuable experience before moving back to either PSG or Manchester United to fulfill their potential. Or in simple terms, a feeder club. This strategy could prove to be a game changer for Manchester United, as it would provide a steady stream of top talent from around the world, honed and developed through their time at Sporting Braga. This multi-club network could help the Red Devils regain their dominance in European football and build a stronger, more cohesive team. So, United fans, with this added information about the Qatari group's plans for the club's future, does this make Sheikh Jassim's bid even more appealing? Let us know in the comments. But hey, if some United fans are feeling a bit uneasy about more foreign ownership or have concerns about potential moral issues with Middle Eastern owners, there's always an option right here in the UK. Enter Britain's richest man, Sir Jim Radcliffe, who's also eyeing the Red Devils. Ranked as the 55th richest person on the planet, Radcliffe's jaw-dropping net worth of $23 billion could easily snag United all on its own. His company, Ineos, which makes petrochemicals and oil products, tossed its hat into the ring back in January 2023, and Radcliffe remains keen on the club. Word on the street is that he's a United fan, which is sure to score points with supporters, though his history as a Chelsea season ticket holder might raise a few eyebrows. But unlike Sheikh Jassim, Radcliffe has actually flown in for face-to-face -face negotiations and meetings at Old Trafford. After their initial bid, Ineos released a statement echoing the Qatari group's sentiments, declaring their ambition to make Manchester United the number one club in the world once again, and promote a modern, progressive, fan-centered approach to ownership. Radcliffe's Ineos group isn't new to the football scene either as they've already taken over Liga 1 Team Nice, where Aaron Ramsey currently plays. While purchasing Nice for £88 million was a big deal, buying United is a whole different ballgame. Radcliffe's love for the sport, club ownership experience, and financials might make him a fan favorite. However, the sticking point is that he won't pay more than what he thinks the club is worth. 
Plus, don't expect him to go on a wild spending spree for superstars like Kylian Mbappe, because that's just not his style. So, we've got the Qatari option and the British Tycoon option. But who else is ready to throw their hat in the ring? Let's look at a wild card. It's unlikely, but Finnish businessman Thomas Ziliakis has a plan. Ziliakis, chairman of the social media group Nova M Group, has submitted an offer through 21st Century Capital, an investment firm owned by his holding company. He believes that Glazer's disconnect with fans is a major reason for their unpopularity, and he aims to change that. Even though he's already admitted he can't compete financially with Sheik Jassim or Jim Radcliffe, he has an intriguing fan-led vision. Ziliakis, a former Nokia executive, wants a shared ownership model, where fans buy into the club to make up their share. This unique bid would allow fans to have an equal say via an app, fostering a stronger connection between the club and its supporters. Ziliakis has investors lined up, but with the punching power of Jassim and Radcliffe, meaning those two could bid high, he may fall short. However, fans may appreciate the possibility of having a real stake in the club, and with that, a say in the direction the club is to take in the long term. The main stumbling block will be how much Ziliakis can pull together from his own investors, the potential fan investment, and whether it's enough to buy out the Glazers and outbid Jasim and Radcliffe. Fans will also appreciate the sentiment that Ziliakis is a long-term fan of the club. As he said himself, I've had a lot of feedback from supporters. I come from a culture where we're very open in our belief that talking is the best way to achieve good results. Fans have been able to call me, both individuals and fan clubs. Additionally, the 69-year-old took to Twitter to further explain his proposal and quash speculation that he could be interested in Liverpool as well. This move demonstrates his commitment to Manchester United and his desire to focus solely on improving the club's future. There's also the potential that Ziliakis might go to ex-legends like David Beckham or Gary Neville, who have both invested in football clubs Inter Miami and Safford City, respectively. Would they consider joining Ziliakis Consortium? Their involvement could bring additional credibility and fan support to this wildcard bid. Is this last option just too pie in the sky? Is it kind of a League One approach? Maybe, but it seems one way or another United will have new owners very soon. The fan-led vision proposed by Ziliakis, though less financially powerful than the other contenders, presents an exciting alternative that could revolutionize the way football clubs are owned and operated. So, United fans, what do you think of these three potential new owners? Will the club strike Qatari gold, embrace British tycoon power, or follow the Finnish fan-led revolution? Have your say in the comments, and let's keep the debate going!